The first flight that was to carry refugees from the UK to Rwanda as part of a controversial deportation plan finally did not take off. This followed a last-minute intervention by the European Court of Human Rights and protests across the UK. Seven refugees were to be deported to Rwanda on Tuesday after multiple appeals to stop the process in UK courts failed. However, at the last minute, the ECHR ruled that an Iraqi man who was one of the seven could not be deported until the asylum plan underwent final judicial review in a few weeks. A flurry of legal interventions followed and the plane finally did not take off. However, the government remains committed to the plan. UK Home Secretary Preeti Patel said that the seven could be deported in future flights. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Boris Johnson even suggested that the UK could withdraw from the European Court of Human Rights. The deportation proposal has faced huge protests ever since it was announced in April. According to the plan, the UK will pay Rwanda for taking in refugees who entered without authorization after 1st January. Rwanda would process their asylum claims and if accepted, they would be allowed to settle in the African country. If their claims were not accepted, they could apply for a visa or face deportation again. From the time the plan was announced, rights organizations have condemned it as unethical, immoral, ineffective, costly and very likely unlawful. From left parties and rights organizations to the Archbishop of Canterbury and Prince Charles, a cross-section of society has expressed opposition to this plan. Former Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn was among those who spoke out against the plan. 70 million people without a home to call their own. 70 million people facing an uncertain future. They are human beings just like you and me in this street here today. And in a different place, at a different time, any one of us could be one of those 70 million. And so I absolutely support and welcome the way in which Ukrainian refugees have been treated in this country and all over Europe. That is the right response. But it must also be the same response for every other refugee. Libya or anywhere else in this world. And to the government who keeps on saying this is all about stopping people traffickers. None of us here speak for people traffickers. None of us here speak for people that exploit others. But I simply say this, nobody except those that are very desperate and very afraid would dream of getting into a leaky boat to cross a dangerous channel to try and get to a place of safety. Another key critic was the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. From the very beginning, it said that such agreements often constituted a violation of international law and that offshoring and externalization of asylum arrangements would only magnify risks and force refugees to seek alternative routes. The UN agency has argued that this will place excessive onus on the asylum seeker who may not have had sufficient access to legal advice. It has added that there are serious concerns that asylum seekers transferred to Rwanda will not have access to fair and efficient procedures for the determination of refugee status, risking refoulement. Refoulement is the forcible return of refugees or asylum seekers to a country where they are liable to be subjected to persecution. Filippo Grani, the UN Refugee Commissioner, had previously called the UK government's stance all wrong and said it should not be exporting its responsibility to another country. On Tuesday, ahead of the flight, several activists from the Stop Deportations Grassroots Network gathered outside the Coinbrook Immigration Removal Centre in Heathrow. The refugees who were to be deported were being held at the facility. Protesters locked themselves together with metal pipes and blockaded exits to the facility as police officers and vans descended on the area. Over the next few hours, at least 18 activists were arrested. Protesters also gathered outside the military runway in Boscombe Down, where the flight had been grounded. Protests took place outside the UK Home Office in London on Monday. An estimated 130 people already in detention in the UK had been served notices of their possible deportation, out of which lawyers for nearly 100 people submitted legal challenges. Keir Fawkeley's estimated that over 70% of people served with removal notices for Rwanda had suffered torture or trafficking either in their home country or on their journey to the UK. Of the 39 people who were identified to be deported in the first flight, many were successful in their legal challenges. However, some of them failed and successive courts upheld the government's plan. The government's plan will be extensively reviewed judicially in July. Meanwhile, the government is determined to continue this policy despite opposition. 
Our legal team are reviewing every decision made on this flight and preparation for the next flight begins now, Preeti Patel said. Organizations have also sworn to continue the struggle against this.